Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch What Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. This episode is sponsored by Audible. Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. That's because Audible is the home of storytelling. You'll discover thousands of podcasts from popular favorites to exclusive new series, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances, comedy, and exclusive Audible originals from top celebrities, renowned experts, and exciting new voices in audio. The Audible app makes it easy to listen anytime, anywhere. While traveling, working out, walking, doing chores, you decide. Plus, new members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash WonderyPod or text WonderyPod to 500-500. That's audible.com slash WonderyPod or text WonderyPod to 500-500. Hey, y'all, it's your girl, Kiki Palmer. I'm an actress, singer, and entrepreneur. On my new podcast, Baby, This is Kiki Palmer, I'm asking friends, family, and experts the questions that are in my head. Like, is only fans only bad? Where do memes come from? And where's Tom from MySpace? Listen to Baby, This is Kiki Palmer, only on Amazon Music. Well, hello and welcome to Watch What Crap Ends, the podcast about all that crap we love to talk about on Ye Old Bravs. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Hello, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Good, you little munchkin. How's everything going over there? Oh my goodness, it is so good. How's everything going over there with you? Good. We are about to go back on tour. We start in two weeks, actually. Very exciting times for us. Uh, we just announced our final cities. We will be going to Boston, Massachusetts, the Wilbur Theater, and then to Massantucket, Connecticut, at the Foxwoods Casino. Nothing fancier than that. Cannot wait to go there, actually. It's going to be so much fun, both those places. Get your tickets at watchwhatcrappens.com. I'm going to go through all the cities just because it's now our first time that we have a complete list. So here we go. Yes. Starting fe- February 2nd, Austin, Texas, Dallas, Phoenix, Los Angeles. That's where the 2023 Golden Crappies will take place at the Wilton Theater on February 24th. Then we're off to Charlotte, Atlanta, Denver, Salt Lake City, Seattle, San Francisco, Toronto, Philadelphia, New York City, Washington, D.C., San Diego, St. Paul, Chicago, Columbus, and then Boston and Mattantucket. So take that. Thank you, everybody, for being with us. Thanks for getting tickets. Those of you who've gotten them, those of you who have not, go get to it. Okay, who's stopping you? And uh, also join us over at Patreon for our bonus episodes and Crappens on Demand videos. This week so far, we did a Southern Char- a Southern Hospitality video recap, and we did a bonus on Peacock's new show, The Traitors, which is a great reality show. So we watched all the episodes and just, you know, gave our opinions. We opined, if you we, will. We put it all out there. I'm going to say it. I think it may have been the best new reality show competition in like 10 years. It's a big statement. I'm open. It's a big statement. I'm open to hearing, you know, I'm open to hearing other, uh, uh, some pushback on that, but I, I really can't think of anything that's been better. I mean, I, love Island, I guess technically is a competition, but I don't really view it as a competition. Um, but in terms of like one of these things with like elimination, like constant eliminations and whittling down your cast, this is the best one in, in years and years and years. Well, it was definitely the most fun for me because of Bravo people being on. And I actually knew some of the people who were on there because Big Brother and right. stuff like that. So, yeah, it was super fun. Also, it's fun watching Bravo friendships form. I think Peacock is doing that really well where they're putting, like, unlikely Bravo friendships. You know, like this one we <laughs> had Kate and Brandy. Like, they got to meet. And the Ultimate Girls Trips uh seasons where you're seeing all these people meet who you wouldn't normally get to see interact so i like that yeah and reza reza being in the mix i think reza was really hoping to stay on that show a lot longer and you could see because he started to cry when he was eliminated 
Uh, oops, sorry, oh, spoiler. This is what for. The- <laughs> well, it's the first episode. You first did spoil episode. that, which you know I'm we sorry. just. I'll we edit that out. I'm spent- so bad. I yes, I apologize. I will we edit that. No, no, because it, it's important for the next piece of gossip. But um, yeah, you I was know, trying we to segue that piece of gossip. People, the entire recap yesterday, and then we went ahead and spoiled it ourselves. <laughs> so no, you there. can edit. You can edit that part out. You can edit that part. No, because right it's important gossip. for this part. So um, Reza was on Watch What Happens Live, and you know he's Reza. So Andy looked like he wanted to murder him half the time. I just think that that's a natural reaction to Reza. You know, um, so they were playing all these games because, you know, let's watch what happens. That's what they do. Like, who's got bigger boobs, a hamster or Wonder Woman? What do you think? Reza? So they were playing one of those games. And um, he finally asked Reza, who do you think is the most overrated Real Housewife? And he's like, I am going to cause a lot of problems with this, but I'm going to say Kyle Richards because I want LVP back. I want LVP back. So, you know, it wasn't that mean. I felt, I mean, he could have said Kyle Richards because she's lame. She's thirsty. All she does is like try and, you know, she's a succubus for other people's fame. She doesn't actually have any of her own. Um, Her hands are funky. She's fucked over everybody that she's ever known. And um, she looks terrible in felt hats, but continues to wear them every day. You know, you could have said so many mean things. All he really said was he misses Lisa Vanderpump. Right. And so then Kyle Richards got onto, I think it was on Twitter. It was on some social media platform. And, uh, and she shot back. Okay, she shut back and she said, I'm pulling it up. So I want to get the direct, the actual quote to make sure I don't want to get any of this wrong. Um, so she, and of course, now I can't find it. Oh, I here got it, it is. I got, got it. I got it. I got it. So then she goes and she says, wasn't this show canceled? As in Shaw's the Sunset. Wasn't this his show canceled? And wasn't he the first one voted off on Traders? I can't even be offended. And he wrote back, my show was canceled and I was eliminated first, but my sister and all of my castmates still like me. Shrug. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, my sibling and all my castmates still take my calls. How are Kathy Hilton and Kim Richards doing, Kyle Richards? <laughs> Kyle, you don't have what it takes. You can't even slam back to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And they are the most innocent of all of the Real Housewives. Like, they're the least sh- Shady, you know, like they're the they're the least talented shadesters of all of the Real Housewives. Don't think you're going to be able to come for Reza, okay? No one can go lower than Reza. Yeah, yeah, like Reza, <laughs> Reza is going to go for it, Kyle. Don't even mess with that, all right? And he's also in a position of desperation because he's off a show right now, and he needs to be back on a show. So he's going to do what it takes. Yeah. But nice try, Kyle. You look stupid. Okay, so let's get into this episode, which is Below Dick Adventure. Uh, Season 1, Episode 11. Zero for George's given. Zero for George's. So, um, we're in the middle of Faye having a meltdown because there is a picnic and the potato chips are missing. And she doesn't know where they are. And everyone's annoying her. Everyone's frustrating her. So she's just like she's she's just snapped at Oriana. She just told Oriana, "I gave you a chance to shine, and this is what you need." So she has now gone off to the vans and is uh, venting to Lewis and Mike, um, and just mad. She's like, you know, it's just it's just putting food in a bag. That's all you have to do is put food in a bag. I'm just frustrated by stupidness. And um, someone asked for a lime. Oh, uh, Turner is like, oh, were there limes in that bag? Can I have a lime? Because they're all afraid because this has happened in front of the guests, right? So they're like, oh, my God, Faye's mad. Maybe she's going to shed hair down our throats. (laughs) (laughs) That's the running storyline is that there's always hair in their food. So, yeah. Oriana is telling us, um, clearly, Faye is pissed, <laughs> but it's um, not me, and it's not the chips, it's uh, something else she's dealing with, because there's sandwiches, there's alcohol, and the guests just jumped off a cliff. <laughs> they don't fucking care. So, uh, age much? Like, what are you <laughs> insinuating? Go ahead and just say middle age crisis. I fucking dare you. Go ahead and say heat flash, Oriana, as if I don't hate you enough, chip loser. <laughs> 
So I, I actually did not think that's what she was implying at all. I thought she meant like. I did. She, I thought she was no. like, she's I actually hysterical. Didn't. <laughs> I didn't actually think much of what she was implying. I wasn't really listening to Oriana. I just down with Oriana, fire her, burn her at the stake. <laughs> so um, now the guests head back to the yacht, and Faye says, "Ever wonder? Ever want to know why my hair is so big? It's because it's full of secrets." Thank you, Tina Faye. I feel like I have to keep everyone's secrets: the hair from Gary, the uneaten sandwiches from Jess, the. Theory of deodorant from Michael, poor little goblin. I just wish someone would tell me where the goddamn crisps are. I bet it was Jess. It was Jess. So uh, then uh, the captain's like, Nathan, Nathan, prep the hot tub, mate. Don't fuck it up. And then Oriana's telling the guys, um, pack up and try to pack the best way to get things as clean as possible, please. Thank you. <laughs> So Casey, meanwhile, cannot wait to change rooms. Um, she's really excited because their room right now is a sty. On top of everything else that's going on between Casey and Oriana, it's messy in there. And Casey likes things tidy. And she says, if it's one, it's one thing to be a botch, and it's quite another thing to be a messy botch. Yeah, that's uh, what I tell Ben all the time. Like, Ben, it's one thing to be a bitch. <laughs> it's another thing to be a messy bitch. That's right. You are a messy bitch. Not cleanliness-wise. You're a very clean bitch, um, cleanliness-wise. So uh, Nathan does hot tub. Uh, I don't care. Okay, so then the guests come back to the boat, and Casey's doing the towels, and the guys pack up. The guys are back pack, packing up the picnic, and um, Seth is like, what are we supposed to do with this food? Mike, trash food. Trash! We're going to eat this food, right, bro? Eat trash food? Eat trash food. Eat trash food. It's like the caveman eat, pray, love. <laughs> no, Mike's like on a fucking journey now. Me eat what me want. <laughs> so, uh, Carrie calls Lewis at the wheelhouse to tell him that the weather's bad. And he's, he says, oh, I got bad juju. We're going back to port. They want to hear a story. Here we go. 12 years ago. Picture it. Off the east coast of Italy. We got struck by lightning. We lost all equipment on deck. We couldn't see where we would go. And waves were breaking over the top of the deck. It's pretty scary. And I still didn't crash my yacht, Captain Glenn and Captain Sandy. High five me. And also Captain Jason. Gosh, everyone's crashed their yacht at this point, haven't they? But we're not taking chances again. Night lights for everybody. Um, <laughs> so then Mike is like, um, eat or eat or throw woods eat or throw woods so it's like eat them don't waste food so mike's like bah! like he lets out a big caveman burp and they kind of <laughs> laugh and then they're packing up and putting stuff back in the van and then we see it's 702 p.m and back on the boat someone's like oh my god i was so good i was on my best behavior ever and carrie's like oh i just want to give you all an update wither is putting us at port when we get back to harbor we can have dinner on deck so I can drink on dock. Ain't that exciting, everybody? You're stuck. But you're stuck playing spin the bottle with Captain Carey. What an adventure! <laughs> so the, um, the anchor is coming up and Casey is steaming and she says to Lewis, she's like, you've changed. And he goes, well, you've missed. Oh, yes, I did change. I missed this. You missed the strip tease. And she goes, nudity makes me uncomfortable. Um, Especially Lewis nudity, let's be honest here. So Lewis is like... <laughs> you know, nobody likes watching Play-Doh being slowly unwrapped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like when you take the plastic wrap off of the dough you've set rising in a bowl. <laughs> so rude. So Lewis is like, well, you need to say it makes you hungry. If you're eating a salad, what kind of salad would Mike be? I'd say a Caesar with an egg on top. <laughs> I'll be the egg. So now Faye goes in to carry. Mike. Mike is not a Caesar salad with an egg on top. What well, salad would you Mike say, is a Mike? wedge at best. If, <laughs> if, if, if we have to say he's a salad, we'll, we'll give him a wedge. Like just a big clunk of iceberg lettuce with, with like blue cheese poured all over it. Yeah, he's a potato salad, I think. He's just a potato. 
It was just, <laughs> just straight up potato. So Faye goes to visit Carrie, and she's like, every time I do a picnic, I feel let down by things being forgotten. And then last night, someone was going in the galley, and I have to have a chat with the girls about a few things. Oh, something was going on in the galley, I should say. Not someone was going in the galley, but something was going on in the galley. Oh. And so she doesn't get specific, but she tells us, everyone says everyone spits, and that's why I'm not telling them about the hair. Um, I can get over a missing bag of crisps, but if we do not bond as a team, this boat will sink. <laughs> so then the storming starts, and there's three minutes where something's happening on deck. Port, I don't know what I'm Arriving to the port. They're going into this tiny-ass port once oh. again. This, okay. They're going to maneuver their way. And you know, everyone just can't stand it when this big-ass boat comes in, <laughs> knocking over all their canoes. So uh, Faye, Faye decides to have a meeting with the with her, her department and Jess. And Jess is like, I actually have work to do. Why are we doing this? A baked Alaska does not just bake itself. Does Alaska bake itself? No. So they start docking and Faye pulls a, a meeting and Turner is like, oh my God, this feels scary. And Faye's like, ladies, ladies, there's things we let slip. I lost shit in front of my clients. You forgot stuff. There was a hair in food last night. And then Seth pops a fender like right over his head. He's like, yep, that was nothing to me. And then it cuts back to Faye going, moving forward to service. We're going to put our hair completely tied back just to be a bit more professional, a bit nicer. And let's get through the next two charters. Let's mark this up for a win for Jess so she can feel like she's done something right this charter. <laughs> and so now the boat docks and Oriana's like, did we find out where your like chip bag is? And because it doesn't matter. This is the end of the story. Please do not make me lose my shit again. I gave you a chance to shine, Oriana. Shine, shine, shine. Da 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 da. Curtain up. Da 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 da. Um. So, um, hot tub Turner. Oh, Turner's in the hot tub, and is asking for shots. And so Nathan uses his radio to tell Oriana to bring shots. And Oriana's like, coming now. <laughs> so then Jess is telling us, you're only as good as your last meal. So hopefully the girls don't fuck it up. Because tonight I'm doing surf and turf. <laughs> They're really into this chorizo business. And then wagyu. I like this chorizo business. <laughs> Did you hear the latest food trend? It's something involving chorizo business, and they're into it. <laughs> uh, so Lewis is giving out a schedule, and um, Nathan is talking about like yeah, he was in trouble for helping Interior, but now that Lewis and Oriana are banging or almost banging, they're supposed to always be helping them. Which is kind of true. And then yeah. Faye is telling us, Oh, the guests want to celebrate gay pride. And the fact last night's dinner didn't go as planned. We have to make the sure. We have to make sure the guests are just blown. <laughs> away. Away. I mean, not that gay for pride. <laughs> I want a colorful ambiance for tonight. <laughs> so, um, so Jess is like crisping up some octopus mournfully, and then Nathan's going to bed, and then Casey um, kisses Mike on the cheek and gets lipstick on his cheek, and he goes, "It on me, lip on me, kiss on Mike." Kiss on Mike. <laughs> so Faye is like, well, if the boys help with that bitching and moaning, I'm all for it. So Casey's showing Mike how to make a bed, which is like a sitcom. Yeah. This bed? Yeah. Well, you take a sheet and then you put it over. Sheet rock. Hit. Hit. Kill. <laughs> Kill. Like, no, no. <laughs> so as you sleep on, you just put it over this corner of the, oh, fire. Mike, fire. <laughs> All right, Mike, just stop. You, now you look like E.T. Get out of that sheet. <laughs> Mike, comfortable. Safe space. Sheets are. <sighs> Mike, discover America. <laughs> Thread count. Nice. 
So then Faye is taking drink orders, and Shelby, I believe it's Shelby, one of the ladies is, like, brushing her hair luxuriously. Yeah, Shelby Potts, daughter of not Annie Potts. <laughs> Shelby Potts, hair litterer, and... <laughs> hair framer, by the way. <laughs> hair framer, and trier of name stealer, attempter at name stealer. <laughs> not buying it, Shelby Potts. Nope. <laughs> So, so Turner's like, uh, if the, if there's a hair, it's Shelby's, not mine, everyone. And so Faye's losing her mind because she hasn't told the captain yet. She doesn't want any jokes about the hair. So she says, well, I am purely walking on eggshells to make sure Kerry doesn't find out about his bloody hair. I will get through this charter. We will get through it. This charter will have a chance to shine. So Kerry joins them. And um, meanwhile, Mike downstairs is like, you dry shower. I do bad. Bad, bad. Kill bad. Kill bad. <laughs> like, oh my God. Stop stabbing the bed. It's time for a commercial. It's time, time for, for a crappens commercial. It's hard to stick with working out. Oh my God. Don't we know about that? I mean, we try and then we fall off and then we try it again. But you know what? With Peloton, here's something I'm not sure you realize. Peloton is more than just a bike. You probably know that Peloton makes bikes. But did you know they also make treadmills, Ronnie? Yeah, and you know, treadmills are not all the same because the Peloton tread can adjust your speed at incline automatically while you're taking a class so you never break your stride. Yeah, they've got great instructors. The Peloton tread instructors have a variety of different training backgrounds and styles of motivation that work for runners and walkers of all levels. And you can work out when it works for you because Peloton offers thousands of on-demand classes and they're available 24-7. That means you can work out whenever and wherever is convenient for you. Yeah, and there's like so much power in mixing it up because nothing gets you moving like the perfect song. I mean, don't I know that? Peloton offers the best playlist with a variety of genres, whether you're looking for EDM, 90s pop, or something soulful. Peloton has music to fit your mood. And you don't have to be a super athlete to enjoy Peloton because there are classes for every level. So try Peloton Tread risk-free with a 30-day home trial. New members only. Not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Life is short and it's full of a lot of interesting questions. What does happiness really mean? How do I get the most out of my time here on Earth? And what really is the best cereal? These are the questions I seek to resolve on my weekly podcast, Life is Short with Justin Long. If you're looking for the answer to deep philosophical questions like what is the meaning of life, I can't really help you. But I do believe that we really enrich our experience here by learning from others. And that's why in each episode, I like to talk with actors, musicians, artists, uh, scientists, and many more types of people about how they get the most out of life. We explore how they felt during the highs and sometimes more importantly, the lows of their careers. We discuss how they've been able to stay happy during some of the harder times. But if I'm being honest, it's, it's mostly just fun chats between friends about the important stuff. Like if you had a sandwich named after you, what would be on it? Follow Life is Short wherever you get your podcasts. You can also listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. So then we cut back to eating and someone's like, oh my God, Turner, you're froggy again. Which well, no, because Turner, no, Turner, Turner said something about feeling. She says, you feeling froggy? And someone goes, there's Turner again saying froggy. And everyone's like, yeah, Turner, you always say froggy. She's like, what? Like, and they're like, what does it even mean? And Shelby's like, she means it like, it means, she said, she's like, it means spicy. And I'm like, why don't you just say spicy? And Turner's like, it's not as fun. And then Hannah, Hannah, who we've not heard much from, goes, just like saying social intercourse is better than let's talk. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. And Carrie goes, it's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> that was a hilarious analogy. <laughs> Listening to you tell this, you know how you find yourself um, just talking about random things from these shows to people that don't watch them? I'm sure you do it too. Because everyone yeah. who watches Bravo does it. But I was at dinner with my parents, and I was like, so... There was this part where there's this chick, and she, she goes, hey, you know what my nickname, and you know what my nickname was in high school? Pork Chop. And she was all happy, but then her friends were all really sad for her. And she's like, what's wrong with Pork Chop? Then can I just tell you, we laughed and laughed. <laughs> 
We laughed and laughed. It was like the first time I had ever heard it. And um, here we are again with another Turner scene. But I don't understand this froggy one. I want pork chop back. Bring back pork chop. Turn up pork chop only. Turn up pork chop only. Turn up. Turn up pork chop. Pork chop. Mike sleep in pork chop. Um, I just remember with Froggy, I remember there was an episode of Real Houses of Atlanta where Kenya Moore said, if you want to get Froggy, then let's get Froggy. And I came on this podcast. I was like, what is she even talking about? Froggy. That's ridiculous. Like, what does she even say? Kenya Moore just says weird things. And then everyone messaged me being like, man, Froggy is slang. And then, and so like this That's scene, That's literally I was like, us on every single recap. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. So watching this scene and watching them watching them be like, there's Turner saying Froggy again. I was like, I was that person. That was me. <laughs> That's always us. We're like, that's janky. What a stupid word. I mean, this janky. was like years On ago, fleek. you know. <laughs> we're, we're slang skeptics. Yeah. So um, let's see. By the way, uh, audience, I know it seems like we're talking about nothing. It's because literally nothing happens on the show, okay? We're, we're making an effort. So Casey is showing Mike the beds still. And she's like, so now you know what it's like to be Stu. He's like, stupid. <laughs> so, Mike joke. Mike <laughs> joke. Stupid. <laughs> Egyptian cotton. Soft. Mike like soft. Uh, Mike. Okay, Mike. Well, I know that you enjoyed bundling up that sheet in the shape of a little bunny, but it has to go back to sheet form and go on to a bed. No! Soft bunny. Mike like. Kill bed. Kill bed. <laughs> Kill bed. Save bunny. Now dinner is being delivered, and Faye is like, Oh my god, there's something, there's something on this plate! Hold, please, hold! It's a bit of onion. Everybody calm down. So, Hi, uh, kind of, hold on, hold on, there's something else, everyone, be careful, there's something else! Oh, just, a, it's, a, it's a bit of parsley, never mind, everybody, carry on, everyone. <laughs> well, hello, everybody, welcome to dinner. In addition to Faye's hair... You might also <laughs> possibly get a taste tonight of Linda Cannellini beans and octopus. <laughs> Enjoy. Are we going to work Linda Cardellini into every recap this ep- <laughs> this week? Because we're now going on to three. We made it into three episodes. <laughs> Damn it! I wish we could retroactively weave her into. But how can we have a Linda? How can we have a Cannellini beans reference and not mention Linda Cannellini? I mean, come on. Yeah. Linda Cardellini, yeah. Linda Cardellini, yeah. (laughs) Okay, so... You know, the first thing I thought of when I... Last night, when I was watching this show, when she's like, I'm making a cannellini puree. I was like, of course, it's the one week where we make (laughs) actual cannellini bean jokes earlier in the week because we're making Linda Cardellini jokes. (laughs) Then, of course, cannellini beans come up. You're really going to enjoy this Scooby Dooby Doo. <laughs> Talk about a Scooby snack. Um, should we invite Linda Cardellini to the crappies? Do you think she would yes, come and please. just be like, <laughs> <laughs> if anyone out there, we're sending out the bat signal. If anyone out there knows Linda Cardellini, please let us know right away. We have a very special award that's just for her at the uh, 2023 crappies, the Cannellini Award, <laughs> the Best Bean Award. But Cannellini, Cannellini, Cannellini <laughs> Vanguard Award, first annual, <laughs> first annual White Bean Award goes to Linda mm-hmm. Cardellini. So then, um, one of the ladies like, "Oh my God, Linda Cardellini beans! I may have to unbutton my top button." And Jess is like, "Any boys available to do dishes?" So they start, you know, going through dinner uh, service and stuff. And Jess tells Mike, "She's like, um, would you get the girls ready because I'm plating now?" And he's like, "Cook plating." She goes, "Um, <laughs> the chef is plating." Cook plating a chef. (laughs) Cook plating chef. Chef dead. Chef dead. Kill chef. Kill chef. Chef not soft. (laughs) Chef not bunny. (laughs) (laughs) So then we go to Carrie, who's regaling the guests with his stories of the seas. He's like, um, well, 
I've uh, rescued, not people, actually. I've really never gotten in that kind of trouble. But I have rescued two adorable Pompskis and Oski. <laughs> All right. Everybody pass around these pictures. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Um, Actually, that looks like Captain Sandy uh, having dinner with Saddam Hussein um, <laughs> and then holding a sword in another hand, fighting off pirates. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's the picture Sandy sent me. All right, back <laughs> to the Huskies. Back to the Huskies and the Pompskies. There you go. So I've got, a, I've got a Pomsky. His name is Benny. I rescued him. He doesn't look like a little Pomsky. He looks like a Husky. I reckon they bred two Pomskis and a Husky came out. So if I breed the my Husky with another Husky, maybe a Pomsky comes out. I don't know how the rhythm works for these things, but it's a cute-ass dog. And uh, he's hilarious. Mm. Also not related to a Shotsky, just a Pomsky. <laughs> so Faye goes down to, to pick up food. And she's like, ooh, that looks nice and colorful. Ooh, spinach and truffle risotto with beef filet. And the gay is like, this is my death row meal, badge." <laughs> Uh, and then, um, and then Carrie's like, oh, I love steak. And Shelby starts asking Carrie about his girlfriend. And he's like, yeah, well, she's from Turkey. And Turner goes, I prefer chicken. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Feeling a little froggy. Oh. So Oriana's like, um, Seth, if you're not doing anything, we have dishes and a sexy chief stew who would appreciate your help. And he's like, I would love to have a sexy chief stew. Yeah. And so Oriana goes to Faye. She's like, oh, my God, you have to hook up with Seth. She's like, well, I haven't been hooked up with since so long, really. I'm not really sure the telephones even go into walls. <laughs> oh, yeah, the plugs uh, have changed. <laughs> so then um, uh, yeah, Oriana's basically, basically wa Oriana wants Seth uh, <laughs> to have sex with Faye. So that way Faye chills out. So now the gays are going to bed. And... Um, Seth is like, uh, he shows up to, to do the dishes, etc. And Jess is just like cursing in the kitchen, just cursing to herself. And, um, and Faye, Faye's being flirtatious with Seth. Seth, she's like, oh, don't mind me. I'm just going to go right in between your legs there. And he goes, go for it. Ooh. <laughs> so um, Jess, uh, Jess is just like, God damn it, fucking fuck. She's like, oh, yes, between the legs. Oh, he's a hot guy and he has confidence. Oh. So Seth's like, well, I just want you to know I'm, uh, I'm going out of my way to help. Especially you. Me? Yeah, you. Um, and she's like, well, I just want a happy crew, so yay working. Good night. And she tells us, well, I haven't, I love a handsome man who helps, but I haven't had that wow conversation with Seth yet. I'm still <laughs> unsure. Until there's a wow conversation, I just don't know. What does he think about the Dyson Air hair curler? <laughs> mm, I just don't know. Wow me, big boy. Wow me. Spoiler alert. I don't think anyone's had a wow conversation with Seth yet. That's something that I won't even say is on the horizon. It's just it's just one of those things that's not going to happen in life. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to see things what they are, for what they are, not try to have conversations with them. You know, yeah. you, know you know, it's like trying to talk to a surfboard. You're not going to you're only going to get so much out of that. Yeah. So um, now it's the final day of the charter, and um, Casey's serving breakfast and everything, and Jess is making breakfast, and um, Shel Jess, <laughs> I guess they serve Shelby a a big drink, a, a, maybe a big mimosa or something, because Shelby's like, "That's a Shelby pour." <laughs> Got that humor from not my mother Annie Potts, just <laughs> just someone else, <laughs> just another funny lady. Uh, so Casey's like, yeah, just doing some morning service. And Faye's like, oh, yes, well, we're still unpacking lunch, aren't we, from the picnic? <laughs> Don't look at this. Hear the crisps. And Casey's like, no, why? <laughs> and she's like, Michael, did you know where this bag came from? Michael, Mike, man, a man, man. He's like, yes. Where did this bag come from? Bunny soft. I knew it. It's the crisps. Uh, she's like, this is what we were looking for the whole day. I can't believe that everything I've been through. Just treating me like garbage all season. The one time I break down and cry is over a missing bag of crisps. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> so they miss them because they put them in a trash bag. 
which yeah. I can see, but I carry everything in trash bags. But, so, um, like, you know what? Go though? through the trash bag, you know. But also, like, you put things in a trash bag. Do you not remember you put things in a trash bag? And also, when you're looking everywhere for something, why did you not look into the bag? Just look into the bag. Because it's got trash in it, God forbid. You know, that suggestion that you just made, why don't you just look into the bag? You know what I call that? A wow situation. Mm. (laughs) It's a wow conversation right there. (laughs) Now that's a wow conversation, big boy. That's a wow moment, just (laughs) like Linda Cardellini showing up on a stage. (laughs) That wasn't worth $9.95 a minute, I'll tell you that much, (laughs) you little... Cardellini tongued mother if, trucker. If Miss Clear was still alive, I would say, hey, Miss Clear, what's a wild situation? She even wouldn't be able to anticipate that. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I just drank a bubbled water and hiccuped. Um, so uh, Mike is like, oh, bin bag. Crispy bin bag. And Lewis is like, well, we weren't looking in bin bags, were we? So then Jess and Faye are talking, and Jess goes, Babe, you need to communicate. You don't tell me anything. The guests are at the table waiting. I know nothing about it. Well, I did, actually. I radioed you. Where's your radio? And it's not on her. (laughs) She's like, well, maybe it's... She goes, well, it's right there, isn't it? There's your radio. Nowhere near you. It's not even in the same zip code (laughs) as you. Yeah, Jess is mad because the guest is down at the table and they didn't have any food on the table yet. And Jess is like, she's like, the guest is at the table and there's no nothing on the table. What is wrong with people? So she's just thinking like, oh, we're back to incompetency when actually it's Jess who had completely ignored her radio when Faye messaged her. Well, Jess is always blaming someone else and she talks to people like shits. Well, I'm fucked off about it. So... <clears throat> do you need two of us? And Casey's like, I'm going to knock out the cabins. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, you can like feel the energy shaft in there. Leave me out of that. So Ooh. face. Ooh. Jess, I have a question, Jess. Would you like me to take egg your orders yet or not? And Jess is like fiddling around doing something. And she goes, does it look like I'm ready for egg orders? Well, I'm just asking, yes or no? Use your brain, woman. (laughs) I've already got enough on my mind. What with this chorizo business? So clean, 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 clean. So Faye takes some eggs Benedict requests, which they get, and um, she delivers them, and it's fine. And then Faye's like, well, overall, I'm just so happy with the way the charter went, but Carrie still doesn't know about the hair. Oh, the guests are so happy, though. I'm just pinching myself. (laughs) What's going to go wrong? So now they line up. You know, to say goodbye to the guests, and Jess is wearing, she calls it a babushka, which it's not a babushka. I think it's just a fur hat. Um, uh, one of the ladies gave it to Jess. Um, way to go, Heather Gay. Way to keep yours. Wow. So, also, um, um, a hat full of hair. Just going to point that out. There's a lot of things a, just covered hair in forward. hair with, this, with these people. A lot of hair. So, they all, they all, uh, line up and and then the primaries give their little speeches shelby does whatever shelby says about like froggy what a crazy word am i right god i can't believe i'm marrying this bitch and then uh turner goes i mean i know we may have had a couple of hairs in our food but we had a great time you know the producers yeah. made her say that by the way the producers were like hey before you leave you should probably mention that there was hair on your food <laughs> yeah and she's like i'm sure you guys were panicking in the back but we didn't see it i mean to me you're all pork chops carrie's like what the <laughs> fuck that guess actually called us pork chops we really fucked this one up get down says all of you if i can't trust my crew that's a problem i need to get to the bottom of this immediately and to think I even showed these people an adorable photo of Benny, my pub ski. God! I mean, so now ski. we're in tip meeting, and Carrie's like, gotta be honest, guys, not 100%. I'm standing next to the child, I guess, and then I find out there's hair. 
Oh, I feel like a clown, a hairless clown, which makes it even worse. And the guests expect Captain to know everything. It, is, it, it, it affects how fat the tip envelope is, and it's not fat. Explain. <laughs> so Jess goes, well, it was very frustrating and mortifying at the same time, so I was pissed about it. We just wrapped it up and put a bow on it and chucked it in the bucket. That's what we did with this chorizo business. And Carrie goes, well, if they thought it was dealt with, then they would have made a joke. They wouldn't have made a joke about it at the end. And we've done this long enough to know that shit happens, but I need to be made aware of it. And so Jess just kind of stays stoic, and she tells us, well, it happens. But the girls were serving food with their hair down. It was not my hair. What motivates me are the guests, and they're happy. Well, not that happy, because they left you yeah. 16K. That's bad. Yeah, it was low. It's very, very bad. Yeah. Well, it just seems like on the deck side, it's like the first week all over again. So... I know we're getting towards the end of the season, but you're only as good as your last day. So, Seth, I so see you're getting along with the crew, etc. You seem blander than the first day you got here, which is strange. Doesn't usually happen that way. But I think that's a good quality because we need bland people to lead the boat. So I want you to be the lead deckhand. And he's like, yeah, unlike Lewis, he can be less friendly. Well, I'm giving Lewis one more t- option in the wheelhouse then. And Lewis is like, oh, this feels so good. Now I'm lead deckhand. Uh, now that, uh, I guess it's Seth who says this. He's like, yeah, now that I'm lead deckhand, <laughs> they'll see who I really am. Uh, I'm not just bland. I'm a dick. So, yeah. Carrie... And Lewis, they, they got to Lewis looking like, this is not the best decision, but I'm not going to say anything because I'm Lewis. Yeah, Lewis is happy to have people, you know, fall into traps. So, Carrie calls Faye up to the wheelhouse, and he's like, So, Faye, why didn't you tell me anything about the hair and the food? Could you explain this a little bit? And she goes, well... She, t- she tells us, she goes, I can't believe I've just been pulled into the wheelhouse just because I'm trying to cover for someone that treats me like crap. I'm done. I'm not taking any more of Jess's shit. Yeah. And she's like, well, I wanted to sleep on it and to see how to deliver it to you because I knew if I told you during service, everything would have fallen apart, especially Jess. What an emotional... Re- have you seen her lately? Just cuts to Jess like... <sighs> Like, completely <laughs> stoic. He's like, well, all I would have done is gone to the guests. We're all here to do a job. And if we're going to be a team, you need to communicate. Thanks, love. Get over here and let me slap your backside, toots. Would you like to see a photo of an extremely adorable dog? Because I'll have one right here. Here you go. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's nice. So Jess and Casey are texting each other. Uh, Casey's like, would you like to have coffee later? <laughs> and Jess is like, hmm. Fine. So then um, there's some talk of toilet paper. Lewis is like, we're on our last roll of toilet paper. Mike, no notice. Mike, have bed. (laughs) God, not the sheets again. Scott, she's so obsessed with the sheets, this charter. (laughs) Sheets, pretty. So now it's time for the preference sheet. And uh, we have a... uh, Coming up next for our next charter is we have Ariana, who's a luxury hair extensions company, owns a luxury hair extension company, and she's with her college friends, and they want to celebrate their glory days. Uh, They're going to do a quick 24-hour charter, and it's going to be like an elevated HBCU, and they're going to do a homecoming. Yeah. So the guests are requesting horseback riding. Ah, horseback riding in the mountains. It's a totally different part of whatever they've been seeing. It's the freshest air you're ever going to breathe in your goddamn life. Breathing that air is a goddamn adventure! (laughs) And nothing says adventure like an adorable barn. Let's look at that barn. Oh, let's look at the barn. We're going to have a barn. Does anyone look at photos of the barn? I would like to see a photo of the barn. Oh, it is beautiful. Oh, no, what is this? And Jess scrolls on Lewis's phone to a picture of Lewis dressed like a pineapple. (laughs) He's like, well, how far are you going through my phone? It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. 
Uh, so then Casey and Jess go to have some coffee while Nathan kicks a soccer ball around and Lewis cleans the hot tub. So Lewis is like, listen, you and I have two, two totally different styles. I'm going to be like, hello, I'm your boss and this is how to do it. And if you don't like that, we'll have to have a talk about it later. Actually, that was Seth doing his Lewis impersonation. I Why Seth do I keep that? getting them confused? They're not the same kind of white man at all. They're completely different white men. <laughs> <laughs> because we all know that Lewis would never say any of that stuff. Lewis would just say, oh, you're doing something wrong. I'm going to look at it and then maybe tell Captain Kerry later. Well, I thought it was a talk with Nathan saying, listen, now I'm your boss. I'm going to try to be a little bit more stern with you before I get fired myself. Mm, no, no, no. It was just Seth. Seth saying, we're here to get a job done as best we can get it done. So we're going to get it done. And Lewis goes, well, just be delicate. Yeah. Well, let me ask you one thing. Is a lion on a motorcycle jumping through a firing delicate? Hmm. I don't even understand <laughs> why del delicacy is part of that scenario. <laughs> but exactly. thank you for warning me that something like that could happen. He's like, <laughs> yeah, take it. So then Casey and Jess, uh, Jess is just complaining about her emotions being shot. And then Oriana's talking, uh, Oriana sees i don't know she's like what are they talking about and face like probably about me hmm? and then oriana because they're just going to get coffee they have more of a bond they're getting coffee i love their little relationship by the way i want to have coffee with them and oriana is like wow that's kind of ballsy to take your own stew to talk shit about you yeah she's like oriana <laughs> just trying to trying to burn Everything. the boat down as usual it's like literally every chance she gets to undermine someone or start some kind of a drama or manipulate someone she's the worst i know so jess goes jess is telling saying Faye brings out my bad side i didn't come here to be pissed off i'm doing something i love every day chorizo business or not and i can't enjoy it <laughs> Because I'm so irritated. Case is like, yeah, well, sometimes I get jealous of you. Just like, like you just get to be like the slow chick in the galley. She's like, I know that's what it looks like, but you don't understand what I go through at night. <laughs> Trying to figure out what is this chorizo business in the first place? <laughs> well... Someone broke into a Chorizo's house, and the Chorizo confronted the burglar, then had to go have eye surgery. And his car flipped down the road ten times in the snow in Pasadena. <laughs> so very, very rough. You don't know what I go through at night. So, <laughs> so anyway, they're excited to be cabinet odd, mates. Odd stress response from her. <laughs> reciting Erica Jane. When, yeah. <laughs> the most stoic person in the world. Her stress response is just repeating Erica Jane lines. <laughs> it's expensive to be me. <laughs> Hold on just a moment before I rip into yet another baby octopus. Oh. Oh. Wow, you're warming up off key. You must really be stressed. <laughs> How many fucks do I give? None. <sighs> so let's see. So uh, they're talking. Oriana's like, well, I hear that there's going to be another room swap. So it sounds great right there. Just so undermining you. And Faye's like, is this needed? I just didn't think we'd get to the point where she felt she needed to leave me. <laughs> well, whatever. If she wants to leave her, I'm not leaving. Yeah. And I am telling you, I'm not going nowhere. Yeah. I'm the best thing you ever had, Jess. No I way. Am. I wish I knew all the Dreamgirls lyrics, but I don't, so I should just continue on. I'm just going to go ahead and cut my losses from the Erica Jane scene. <laughs> just move on forward. My stress response is not Erica Jane, but just some sort of cobbled together lyrics from <laughs> one of Effie's big songs. When at first you don't Erica Jane, Jennifer Holiday and Jennifer Holiday again. That's <laughs> what I say. So Seth is like, hey, guys, time for a, hey, a lead deckhand here. Want to call a meeting? Tall guy talking. Hey, 
I have a totally different style, okay? I'm not an asshole, but if I ask you guys to do something, I want it done. And I don't want anybody battling up me on anything, okay? I've been doing this a lot longer than everybody else on this boat, okay? <laughs> so, you'll see. I'm not an asshole. I'm not an asshole or anything. Uh, stupid face. Stupid face. Another stupid face. Okay, not an asshole. Yeah, but as soon as shit starts not getting done, we're going to be playing the Chinese finger trap game. Got it? <laughs> Which, by the way, he literally said. And everyone just looks at him like, uh... <laughs> Don't get it, actually. What's that? Like, okay, if everything gets done, we're going to be playing the Chinese finger game, trap game, but with our heads. Or something. But, like, what kind of threat is that? It's a fun game, actually. Well, is that just saying that he like you're going to be stuck with him? Because yeah. it's like the... It's like tension? I don't know. You're going to have trouble <laughs> with the tension. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. As soon as shit's not getting done, guess what we're doing? Hopscotch, okay? And you're doing it all night long. <laughs> so then uh, Mike is like, not psych! Mike, not psych! <laughs> and Seth's like, oh, God, I love this weather. It's, hey, let me check my temperature. Oh, the temperature says, winning! Yeah, woohoo! I'm winning! Yeah! Because you know Seth is a winning person. Yeah. Winning! Totally winning. So now uh, we see just like clips of people doing stuff. Nathan and Casey are dancing. So and they're listening to headphones while they dance. So Jess, Jess is like, what's happening here, dancing fairies? I love a silent disco. They know my music. They know my music. My other stress response. <laughs> <just learn. laughs> so Seth sees Faye and he's like, what's wrong? She's like, well, I just need a little time for myself. I need a little time to shower before everyone takes the hot water. And I can curl my hair and pick the most powerful lipstick ever known to man. So he's like, all right, <laughs> oh, I'm going to go to the hot tub. So he does. And Jess is like, oh, you're going to the hot tub? Wow, you're really a sucker for that hot tub. And Casey whispers to her. He's weird. <laughs> <laughs> he's really weird. Look at how he's going to the hot tub right now. Yeah, he's going he's to the hot tub. He's so weird. He's like going to get in the hot tub right now. Oh. Does, it, does he even know the hot tub's like not meant for humans? It's literally for birds that want to be warm. <laughs> Seabirds. So then we go to Casey and Oriana, and Casey's like, "Hi, um, I like have to talk to you about cabin arrangements." And Faye's like, "Oh, hey, I'm coming into bed in ten minutes, and I don't want people talking with the lights on. I, I like the lights off because I need to sleep. So, however, that's gonna work." <laughs> yeah, and so um, just like, "What's happening?" And Casey's like, "Well, Faye just said she's going to bed in ten minutes. She doesn't want people turning on the lights." And Jess is like, oh, well, for fuck's sake. So they they do their room swap, everything. And, and it's very quick. And it gets done. And now Casey and Jess are like, so, so, so happy. They're like, Casey's like, okay, not, Rumi. Good night, Rumi. Good night, Rumi. Good night, Rumi. <laughs> She's like, I feel like I'm going to sleep so well. Oh, God. Me too. <laughs> you know, Jess is like, oh, God, I've got a talker. At least yeah. face shut up every once in a while. So now it's the next morning, and Lewis is going over the list of things to do. And then Casey gets on the phone with her mom and shows her her new room. And Jess pops in. She's like, hello, mom. How are you? <laughs> yeah, she's like, look, it's my new roommate, mom. And she's like, oh, well, congratulations on a new roommate. Yes, I anticipate many Wonderful evenings of seafaring with your daughter, who shall remain silent after certain hours, I assure you. Well, I've got to go cook now. Goodbye, Mom. She's like, honey, don't let that woman hear you. If she offers you candy, do not take it. Mom, I'm telling you, do not trust her. She is terrifying. Yeah, she is a TWF. Uh, what does that mean? Terrifying white female. So... Work, 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 work. So Faye is eating and Carrie catches her because she's eating chocolate. And he goes, oh, smashing the chokies, are we? She's like, well, I was just checking to see if it was fresh. And he's like, oh, I guess I'll get a bit of chick too. Oh, yeah, chokey, consider yourself smashed. <laughs> Faye really eats those chocolates like she's in a tea commercial, doesn't she? Like, 
And she's like, sometimes I like a moment for myself, just with a, some chocolate and some celestial seasonings. Just me and some le- luxurious chocolates. <laughs> it's like, or like just even a Dove, Dove chocolate commercial. Like, I just didn't know people actually ate chocolate like that, but Faye does. She really does. She's like, ooh, <laughs> chocolate on the outside, caramel corn on the inside. Perfect for a moment of indulgence. I deserve this. Mm, food luxurious. Um, so then the deckies are eating in the mess, and Casey tells Ariana, I swear to God, if that, if, if that is, if the mess is dirty again, I just deep cleaned the mess, so it better not get dirty. So Casey's like, guys, could you please clean up after yourself, after you eat? And Seth goes, oh yeah, we don't need a babysitter every goddamn time we're in here, all right? She's like, uh, well, actually, you do because I keep finding it a mess. No, don't want to hear it again. It. Don't want to. I don't want to hear it again. I don't want to hear it again. Okay. And Nathan's like, Seth, she's just saying to clean up after ourselves after we eat, and he's like, every fucking time we're in here. Okay. Like, God. Nathan's like, let's just like nod our heads and say yes because lead deckhand more like lead dickhead. <laughs> So then the guest pickups and um, the beautiful people. It's a group yes. of beautiful people. So Jess sees them and is like, oh, they're going to be fancy. <laughs> so they, they come on board. Faye starts giving a tour and they have tons of luggage. Luggage, And Mike is like, me no think I brought overweight bag anywhere in life. I, Mike Hope, Soft thing inside. Oh, work, 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 work. A departure in five, departure in five. So they start doing the undocking. Bout a stern, bout a stern, 10 meters. And Carrie's like, well, as far as Lee Dickey, Sith has set high expectations. I want him to show Lewis and the other guy how we do it. If this departure is any indication, Lewis and Seth will make a great team. So everything seems great. Everything's going well. Um, Faye tells the guests, you know, like, okay, we're you're, you guys are going to go horseback riding, and there'll be lunch afterwards, and then there'll also be some snacks. And the guests are like, oh, good, yes, give us little bites. And so then Faye goes and tells Jess, by the way, lunch is going to happen after horseback riding, but I still need snacks to take with me. And Jess goes, what snacks? So, you know, like, Little things, like like this over here. She was like, fine, bring those out. But I don't want to repeat myself. <laughs> so Jess brings out crab and crayfish. And she's like, would you like some flatbread type thing as well? I don't know. Arugula vibes. And they're like, yes, arugula, yeah. <laughs> what? There's because- one guy who goes, oh my God, yes. <laughs> oh girl, yes, arugula. So Faye's like, um, Jess, what was that? She goes, well, I offered pizzas. What now? And and what about the picnic? No picnic. Picnics are dumb. <laughs> She's like, she goes, I'm not a- going to <laughs> fuck around with snacks. It's a silly idea. She goes, but that's just what we just discussed, Jess. Yes, but I flow naturally, and I feel like they're hangry, so I'm making them pizzas. It's going to be wonderful. So Faye goes, well, but I... I, but I thought a snack now and a snack when they get off. I mean, it makes me look bad when they get off the horses and there's no food. Okay, well then you can figure that out. Yes, but we did just figure it out and we made the plan and now you've changed the plan. So uh, just do what we planned. And just goes, you've got to be more flexible. It's called yachting, babe. <laughs> oh, That's hell like no. Why can we not have all of the above? Why can we not have pizza now, snacks after the horse, and lunch? I say all the snacks. Yes, yes, but it's just such a, it's just such an odd fact. First of all, I get not want I get getting off a horse and maybe not wanting to eat. Like maybe that's not most the appetite the most appetizing thing to do but nobody even is bringing that up it's just some weird power trip and jess is barking up the wrong fucking tree I'm yeah and it's a stupid fate. it's a stupid if i'm if i'm getting off a horse i want a snack right away i'm telling you that right now i want a snack I bring just the something. flatbreads is the snack like flatbreads are actually a snack that's what they are literally just bring some chips ahoys i don't need it to be fancy 
put them on a put them on a tray. Well, yeah, we'll see how this works out. But it's my kind of fight. A snack yeah. or no snack. Smack down. I think when in doubt on a yacht, you get the snacks. Yeah, always. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us today. <laughs> Go get tickets for Crappens Live over at watchwhatcrappens.com. Catch our uh, twice a week video recaps and our bonus episodes. This week is The Traitors from Peacock Network. And we will talk to you next time. We sure love you guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Dana C. Dana do. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickolus. Ava Nagila Weber. Jamie, she has no last namey. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. You're never alone with Lacey Monteleone. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. Sarah Greenwood, she only uses her power for good. The Bay Area Betches, Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Always the wiser is Allison Weasler. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Better do what she says, it's Elva Enriquez. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Undo your fasteners, it's Erin Kastner. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. We will, we will, Joanna Rockland, you. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. She's a good hobby, it's Lauren Hobgood. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Nancy Cease and DeSisto. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Your Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey.